that's the second time you read that figure, Jim. You got a problem? Well, uh, frankly, Tech, I'm not sure I can cover all the body sealing points I should. I still feel kind of, well, you know, new on this job. Well, you can relax, Jim. Improving the seal on that flipper over the door is easier than it looks. Tech and I fixed one like it, so we'll stick around and give you a hand. Oh, that's different. With you guys in my corner, how can I miss? No need to polish the old apple, Jim. You should be brought up to date on body sealing tips. I second that motion. So remove that flipper, Jim. That corner seal, too. When you've got them off, take some solvent and clean off the old sealer. You get a better bond on a clean surface. Now take a couple of narrow strips of cloth back adhesive tape and wrap them around that pivot hinge bracket. Oh, just like my old first aid course. On that order, my boy. Pack a little ball of sealer at the rear of the hinge opening, too, Jim. As good as done, Tech. There. Fine. Now, when you remove a flipper to check it for sealing, look at the front end of the flipper hinge. If it has a small L-shaped sponge rubber seal, like a dam, remove it and clean off that area with solvent. Then, cement this new longer seal in its place. Coat the top and back surfaces of the seal with cement, as well as the underside of the flipper. Let that cement get tacky on both the seal and flipper before you install the seal, Jim. Will do, Tech. I know it's got a stick. Here's another installation tip. Tuck the front end of the seal under the turned over flange of the hinge. Press the seal firmly into place and hold it there for a minute. If the front hinge spring bulges out the seal so it interferes with installing the front attaching screw, slide the spring in toward the hinge pivot. Above all, be sure the open end of the hinge is covered by this seal. After installing the seal, open and close the hinge a few times to check for good sealing without interference. Gotcha, Tom. The seal's okay. Fine. Now press a bead of body sealer near the corner of the door header, all across the door opening. Next, place a bead of body sealer along the outer top edge of the flipper cap. This provides a good seal when the flipper is reinstalled. After this, install the flipper and adjust it by sliding it in and out so the hinge section makes a tight seal when the door is closed. Finally, Install this latest type vent wing upper corner seal, making sure you cement the back, top, and end of the horizontal section so the seal will stick tightly to the pillar post, the underside of the flipper, and to the flipper hinge seal. Incidentally, by doing practically the same operations, including placing a bead of sealer in the corner of the door header, you can correct the same condition on the dodge. But instead of laying a bead of sealer along the top of a Dodge flipper, hold the hinge closed and apply a one inch strip of cloth back adhesive tape along the top of the flipper. Line up the tape's inside edge with the inside edge of the flipper so the tape will cover the hinge. Wrap several layers of tape around the hinge pivot bracket too. I got you, Tom. And to me, it looks like a pretty neat fix. That it is, Jim. Sealing of the Chrysler and DeSoto flippers can be improved easily, too. All you have to do is remove the flipper and install a new sponge rubber weather strip on the top outer edge of the flipper bracket. Anything special about that installation? Well, first, the usual thorough cleaning to remove all old cement and sealer. Then, apply cement to the top surface of the flipper bracket and the underside of the door header flipper weather strip. Let the cement get tacky. Close the flipper and apply the weather strip so the curved lip overlaps the upper edge of the hinged section. Position the inner edge of the seal so it fits into the flipper bracket offset. Then add a bead of sealer to the header, reinstall the flipper and tighten the attaching screws tightly so the weather strip will be compressed against the header. Okay. Any other points on Chrysler and DeSoto? Another thing to check is the body hinge pillar upper corner seal at the top front corner of the door, just ahead of the flipper. Will I have to install a new seal? Well, 
If the seal is bulged because it's too long, trim off the rear end so it will do a good sealing job at that end. When you install a trimmed or a new seal, apply rubber cement to the upper and inside surfaces of the seal. Allow time for the cement to get tacky. Then, apply the seal to the header and secure it with the screw. Adjust the flipper so it fits tightly against the seal. Atta boy, Tom. You really covered the bases on door flipper sealing. Jim should have no trouble with this item. I don't think I will either, Tech. Is there anything else along the sealing line I ought to know? Well, Jim, if you ever have to remove a door trim panel or the quarter trim panel on a hard top or convertible, you'd better be sure the openings in the metal panels are sealed before you reinstall it. This sealing is especially important on cars equipped with power window lifts. If water gets in the switch or motor, zingo, there's apt to be a short. Could even burn out the motor. Okay, you sold me. How should the switches and motor be sealed? Well, it will take the switch first. Cut some strips of one and one half inch wide cloth back adhesive tape. Apply these strips at the edges of the switch hole using about a one inch lap so you can form a protective pocket for the switch. You can shape that pocket with your fingers. Say no more, Tom. I can see that when I reinstall the panel, the switch will fit right into this protective pocket. Do we seal at the motor in the same way? Almost the same, Jim. Only you apply strips of tape around the motor so the wires will come out from the top. Right. Then apply tape to the panel above the hole and tuck it under the motor inside the door panel. Finally, cover the entire opening with tape. If you see any wrinkled sections of tape, replace them with new tape. In fact, play it safe and seal all access holes, screw holes, and unused openings. Okay. I'll tape every opening I can. Good. And seal up the large round opening near the bottom of the inside quarter panel of Plymouth and Dodge convertible and hardtop models. On these models also, put tape over the opening below the window regulator handle. Tape up the regulator spring opening too. Other items on these convertibles and hardtops to check are the seams around the rear seat riser and inside quarter panel. You can seal these seams easily with hand putty. That's a good place to seal on the Chrysler and DeSoto cars, too. Right. And it pays to seal inside that riser, Jim. Just reach through this access hole and make a one-inch dam of putty inside the outer end of the riser where it joins the quarter panel. Now, if somebody will please turn this record over, we'll take up some other body sealing suggestions. Once in a great while, an owner might report that the carpet in the rear compartment seems a little damp at the base of the center body pillar. If you run across one of these cases, chances are the sealing at the pillar can be improved. On Chrysler and DeSoto cars, rain occasionally might be driven through the rear edge of the center pillar extension. That's this point right here. It comes out the front edge and takes a path toward the inside of the car. From there, it drains down the front face of the pillar and onto the floor carpet. That's an unusual case, Jim, but it's easy to correct. I could just flow body sealer behind that extension strip to close up the seam, couldn't I? Yep, that's all you'd have to do there. But there's another sealing point at the hinge openings on that pillar that you ought to check. If water gets by the edge of the door, it will run down the rear face of the pillar and into the openings around the hinges. But this is easy to prevent. Just pack body sealer around the hinge openings. You can do it by moving the door from wide open to half open position as you pack the sealer into place. You don't have to remove the center pillar trim. Another place you should be sure is sealed is the weather strip at the bottom of the door. At the bottom? Honest? Tech means what he says, Jim. At the bottom, the weather strip is not only cemented in place, but it's also secured by a wire retainer snapped into openings in the door surface that glides over the sill. Now, if the cement doesn't hold the weather strip securely when the door closes, the weather strip tends to roll outward. If that ever happens, 
the wire retainer clips move in their openings. That lets any water that might have drained into the door seep out of the clip holes and onto the door sill. Oh, I get it now. From the sill, then, that drainage could possibly get into the jute padding under the floor mat. Precisely, my boy. And Tom can tell you how to guard against it. Well, what you do is loosen the weather strip using solvent and remove the weather strip and retainer from the door. Then, apply cement to the door surface and weather strip. Let it get tacky. After pressing the weather strip and retainer into place, let the door remain open about a half hour before you close it. Sounds like a good idea to me, Tom. I'll keep that ceiling tip in mind. Fine, Jim. I just thought of another ceiling item you ought to be up on. It's around the windshield opening metal fence. Does it show up on the instrument panel? <laughs> no, it shows up in the form of steam on the windshield when the defroster is turned on. When a little water gets into the defroster duct, Jim, and the owner turns on the defroster, out comes fog. Now, this is very rare, but you'd best be prepared to seal against this possibility. If rain is driven under the windshield weather strip at this point, and there is an open seam or a wavy spot in the fence, it comes in and drops right down into the defroster ducts. It might even come in through the windshield molding clip holes. At any rate, it reaches the defroster. You'll have to remove the windshield molding in this case, Jim. Then lay a bead of body sealer along the outer edge of the weather strip all the way around and press it down to close up any openings. Yep. And press balls of sealer at the molding clip holes. That all there is to that? No. You'd be smart to water test the windshield to make sure it's sealed up properly. To do this, you'd remove the flexible defroster hose at the right end of the duct. In addition, you'd raise the car from the left to make it lean slightly to the right and let any water that might get by run out the duct outlet. If it is watertight, then reinstall the moldings. Got that? Yep. Anything else on sealing at this point? Well, any time you install a new windshield glass, make sure the glass is properly centered in the opening before you lock up the weather strip. Otherwise, a leak might develop. And if it did, Jim, a bead of sealer around the strip would take care of it. Okay. I think I can handle any necessary sealing around the windshield. Something else on the docket? One more, Jim. It has to do with the heater housing. Occasionally, rain that enters the cowl ventilator might collect in the heater housing. That can happen if the valve in the rubber drain hose doesn't open properly. This valve is designed to open from the weight of the water that collects in the hose. If it didn't open at all, Jim, the water level might get high enough so it could leak out the fresh air doors in the cowl panel or even pass the grommet around the cowl vent operating rod. And I'll have to get that valve to working if it's stuck, right? You sure will. And sometimes you can do that by just squeezing it from the bottom. If the valve section's too long and tends to stick closed, take scissors and cut off about half of it. Generally, once you get the valve open, it won't stick closed again. Okay, Tom. I'll handle this kind of condition, all right. I notice you've got a Suburban in the next store. Got some ceiling to do on that? Yeah, Jim. Uh, let's raise it on the hoist. On Plymouth Suburbans, you might get an occasional case where dust leaks into the back end on the inside. Where dust can enter, water also might come in. This only happens, of course, under unusual driving conditions. But I figure we can correct it by sealing those openings in the underbody panel next to the body mounting brackets near the rear bumper supports. I see. What do we do first? Clean it off thoroughly, Jim. Use steam if it won't clean up easily. Then we'll dry it off. After that, we'll pack a quantity of body sealer into each opening. You better pack those floor pan seams on either side and inside the body mounting bracket, too. That'll be a big help. Right. And we'll check for a small round opening near the left rear corner of the floor pan. If it's not already sealed, we can use a rubber plug or cloth back adhesive tape to seal it off. Any other spots, Tom? Yeah, Jim. The rear floor-to-quarter panel seams. To get at those seams, however, 
we'll have to remove the taillight access hole covers. Then we can use an extension nozzle on this caulking gun and flow some compound on the seams to seal them. Once that's done, we'll check the lower tailgate hinges. Occasionally, dust is sucked up past these hinges and enters the body through the tailgate strikers just below the window. And if you do find any openings at the hinges, pack them with body sealer that you can paint over. Good point, Tech. You got that, Jim? You bet, Tom. Does that wind up this job? Well, you'd better adjust the tailgate striker plate and retainer at the top of the gate to make sure that there's good compression on the weather strip all the way around. We've got a good, tight squeeze on this weather strip now, Tom. I checked it with this shipping tag. Swell, Jim. If you're as thorough as that on all the sealing jobs we've talked about, it'll make our owners happy. And here's a reference book to help you keep those sealing tips in mind, Jim. Fine, Tech. I'll really use that book. Atta boy. Now I also know that you and all our mechanics are set to do body sealing that really satisfies the customer. Thank <laughs> you.